The Point of View is sponsored by Apollonia City, Accra's new master plan city. Good evening. This is The Point of View. We're live on City TV this and every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. Here, at the point of view, we get the right guests, we ask them relevant questions, and we exude some real insights. And we're live on social media at CTTVGH on Facebook, and our hashtag is the point of view. So tonight, what are we looking at? We're asking a very simple question. 423,000 Form 1 and 2 boys entered SHS this week. Last year, free SHS started. By 2020, September, they'll be ready for university. We have 75 private universities and 17 public universities. How ready are our universities to absorb this teeming number of young, brilliant people? We'll be asking our Minister of State in charge of tertiary education how ready Ghana's universities are. Stay tuned. So if you're watching us, you can comment on the Facebook stream or send us a WhatsApp message on the number we're putting on the screen. How ready are we to take on the future? We checked the latest World University rankings and it wasn't a pretty picture. Our premier university was around 800 and something in one of the rankings. Indeed, only five African universities were among the top thousand. That's not a good story, but that's a different conversation. So now we'll find out, are we ready on the infrastructure side, on the finance and the human resource side, and the academic side? And my guest is a man who's been teaching and researching his whole life. We knew him as the writer of Wolves of a Quatriot. He was dean of students, later became the pro VC of the University of Ghana. He became president of Central University College. These days, he is a minister of state at the Ministry of Education. He's in charge of tertiary institutions. Professor Kwesianka, good evening. Welcome to The Point of View. Good evening, Ben. How are you? I'm very well. These yeah. are busy times for universities, yes. secondary schools. Yes. Your ministry is boiling. Yes. You've been in meetings all day. Trouble brewing at flashpoints. I'll give you a cup of coffee so you can keep away from me. Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to take you first to Legon, where a week and a half ago we did a quick report on the accommodation situation. Uh, it looks like beds are in, uh, in high demand, Hansen Ajiman put together a quick report, which I want you to, to watch. Okay. That's right, steps taken to increase residential facilities. The University of Ghana seems to be facing some challenges with accommodation. This was more pronounced when a number of freshmen hopelessly moved from one residential facility to the other in search of accommodation. I was told sometimes some of the rooms are left and when you come and you, you, they'll give it to you, they'll be given out to you. I came and I've moved to about three horse now, but still, all that they have to say is no bed for us. When we came, we went to a craft hall. We saw the senior tutor and it was like the, the horse are full, so he can't help us. Saturday we came to Pent Hall and then they told us they don't work on Saturdays, but the halls are not actually full, so it's a, a network problem. So we should keep refreshing the page. But in contrast to what the senior teacher told us, we still don't know which is which. For some guardians like Cecilia, considering the additional cost of the awards being non-residential students means they might defer the academic journey of the awards to next year. My room, each my room. Tisiano <laughs> In an interview with City News, some continuing students revealed how the situation has bred a practice of extortion with some persons hoarding rooms and selling them at exorbitant prices. Freshmen 
to campus that you have people selling bets some as high as thousand um nine for the traditional halls you have people selling their bets for as much out of course the traditional halls we have inner rooms and then the outer rooms the inner rooms is just probably just for one person the outer has two people for so for the outer people are selling it as thousand nine hundred the least you could possibly get an outer for is around thousand five hundred for the inner it's a flat three thousand and so uh, this is a sort of you know exploitation that is, is is happening for gabriel a level 400 performing arts student the problems of accommodation coupled with his academic work have compelled him to sometimes sleep at his department at night and sometimes i, I it's too late for me i just patch around with friends and the patching to the university doesn't support patching so it is something you have to do with care you know as performing artists we have our uh, dance halls so sometimes we just encourage ourselves and uh, we sleep over uh, in the dance halls uh, there are no mattress no bed sheet but you just have to manage it you dance you dance you dance getting to 12 a.m two or three before you sleep so that you can manage yourself because if you want to sleep for long you may not have any comfortable sleep in an interview with city news the dean of student affairs at the university of ghana professor Godfrey bokpin acknowledged the challenges of accommodation uh, the truth of the matter is that um, the available bed um, compared to the number the university admitted do not matter uh, the university is uh, seriously engaging uh, investors private sector uh, putting more um, um, hostels on campus so uh, we don't have to run into this problem the challenge has, is what economic rent should be charged to enable them break even clearly the issues of accommodation here in the university of ghana and when we pitch that up against the issues of accommodation the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, that only suggests that we need a broad stakeholder conversation on accommodation challenges in various tertiary institutions. Reporting from the University of Ghana for City News, Hansen Ajeman. So that was Hansen Ajeman's report. So, Prof, this is serious. Um, we haven't we haven't brought in the free SHS people yet, who are now informed too. We haven't added a double track yet, and already Legon of all places, which is the largest university in Ghana with the most accommodation, they, they are struggling. We have a big problem on our hands, don't we? <clears throat> it's, it's, um, well, it's, it sounds like news to me, actually, because I would have thought we have put behind us the issue of accommodation challenges um, in the university so that we could concentrate on largely academic uh, problems. Um, it looks to me as if the university has not been able to keep pace mm -hmm. with the increasing numbers of students. And, um, you know, Legon has been relying largely on the traditional halls mm -hmm. as, the, as the stock, a very reliable stock of halls already available. Mm. The um, four traditional halls, then water hall in addition, then the new if you like the new traditional halls, mm -hmm. that is um, Liman Hall and the other Janaka Hall and so on and so forth. Um, the idea was to ensure that you still retained a fair proportion of um, students on campus and then letting the others lose uh, to look for accommodation. But I think what has compounded the situation now is the original uh, formula that was being used which was called the in out 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 whatever in out out in well there were various formulas uh, yes but that ensured that at least one fresh students mm. who are new coming from various parts of the country uh, arrive and um, you know there will at least be some hospitality accorded them that forget about accommodation you are new walk directly into your room so that if there should be any hassles on your part, let this be postponed to your second year, third year. Um, that was the whole idea about mm. the in, out, 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 in, out, out, in, uh, originally, so that in the final year you could come back. So it was believed that by the time you had the second year, you would have settled in and known the environment, the surroundings well enough for you to look for your own accommodation. I think this 
formula still remains, I think, at tech. Because when I visited them last week, I got the impression that many of the students that had arrived, uh, that had walked into the mixed gender situation in those originally exclusively male uh, domains, those were fresh students, so they were comfortably settled, uh, leaving just if a handful of uh, the country students still within the main house of residence. And therefore, it was then expected that the continuing students would find accommodation outside. But Prof, whether in, out, out, or whatever, the truth is that we don't have enough accommodation for the people who are entering all our universities, at least the public ones. Yes. You see, I think when the situation, the university shifted from originally admitting students into um, into the classroom and into house of residence. Um, this was eventually decoupled so that the university ostensibly started admitting students and was obliged to do so only for the for academic admission so that the obligation of having to provide um, accommodation for you at the same time was not there. Um, it looks like it's, it's gradually inching back into compelling the universities to uh, give the accommodation to those that they admit, but that is not the, that's not. So the, you you think we are going to go back to? I, I don't think a so. Variant of in out out in. Uh, I, I would have preferred that 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 formula, which at least ensure that we are hospitable and warm enough uh, to the to the new students coming. So freshers shouldn't be struggling for accommodation. That's my that's my. But I'm asking a general question of of course you've been in office for almost two years. And you, you, are, you can't, I, I don't know what you've put in place, but if at this point we are having challenges with accommodation, then in two years' time when the people who are entering Form 1 now and Form 2 boys who are, Form 2 people who are free SHS get to university, we're going to have a national catastrophe. You see, the whole idea has been for the universities to concentrate on academic facilities. That is the very core objectives. So who uh, does the, the residential? Well, that can be, you know, um, the private sector is there. As they have, they're excited. They ought to be excited about the prospects of um, um, having a 2020 where the, the, there will be a huge influx of students uh, from secondary to tertiary sector. Um, one would expect that, and I know that a number of private sector uh, interest groups are all over the place uh, looking for opportunities to cash in on the huge influx of students uh, coming to the tertiary institutions. Uh, I am a little puzzled that what appeared to have been a thing of the past, that the students hoarding space mm. and, 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 and retailing space. I thought this was a thing So I just past. want to get, are you saying that you expect the universities to allow private sector to do residential facilities? Yes. And for, for universities to concentrate like So is, is this government policy? Universities have already been doing that. But clearly, the vacuum shows the private is, is not a viable business because if it was, the private sector would be in it. Look at the houses they are building in cantonments. Private sector is investing in skyscrapers all over Accra. If they are not building university residential facilities, it's either not a profitable business or the investors are not set up to engage the private sector to do this. Don't, don't forget that in, at the University of Ghana, the, now originally, um, there was a special purpose vehicle that was arranged to cater for the, the new halls near the stadium, the, the Lima halls, the Jubilee hall, and so on and so forth. Um, and those halls were originally expected to be semi-commercial, eh? even though part of the university's um, stock of property, at the same time, they were going to be commercialized and, and charge largely uh, commercial mm. rates. It so happened that somewhere along the way, um, the agenda changed and students started complaining about it. The huge cost. The agenda was to uplift or give a facelift rather uh, to the traditional halls, Sabah Hall, and so on and so forth. Make them attractive enough so that the contrast between the traditional halls and the new halls would not be so sharp. Um, but along the way, I think the, the original purpose for which the new halls were built uh, you know, was not pursued. And so, therefore, they, 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 they slackened. And, and they step back uh, to become the regular. Mm. Are you aware of any plans by any of the investors to improve residential accommodation 
in partnership with the private sector. Because, for example, at tech, we know the investor says they want to give more space to girls. So they are trying to come up with this yeah, mixed hall yeah, thing. Yeah. But it's, it's a temporary solution. Legon has the most halls of residence. Do you know if there are any plans in place? And there, there when are, those plans are? There are already a large number of private hostels, right on. Now, look at the distinction between the private hostels within the walls of the university and those that are uh, beyond the walls of the university. There are quite a number of these private hostels, the, the Pentagon area, uh, towards Martina, um, largely. But a good number of private um, hostels emerged um, 12 or so years ago um, within the Oponglo and um, East Legon vicinities, within easy distances uh, mm. from, from the university. They, I believe, are still there. But I think maybe the rising numbers of students um, have been quite... I'm, I'm pushing this because I feel if the government believes private sector should be the solution, there should be specific incentives or some directive to say these are the terms. For because we've had many issues. I'm sure you are aware of the, uh, for example, the controversial yeah. Africa Integras project, right? right? Where you have a private entity and an investor trying to collaborate to put up infrastructure. And the project has stalled and we are told that the investor could be paying judgment. What, what's, your, what's your blueprint for private participation? in providing residential facilities using, for example, this controversial Africa Integras project as an example? I won't go so much into the Africa Integras uh, pro project, uh, but I, I can only say with reference to that, that uh, it would be worth stepping back after the dust has settled uh, to investigate what may have led to all that happened to ensure that um, a university of the, of, of the nature of um, Legon and quality and standard um, would have laid down regulations by which decision making is, is taken. Um, what happened in this particular case, I think the university uh, would like to, would want to in investigate so that it doesn't really happen again. This is a private sector government and um, we would give any relevant or necessary incentive uh, to the private sector to team up. Uh, with government and the public sector to build um, housing for the universities. But these decisions are taken by the universities themselves. Do you have intentions to investigate the matter? Yes. I, I because have. there's, from what we've read, there are judgments that's possible. The, the, the former VC and the new VC don't seem to be on good talking terms. And your, your minister said we could auction parts of the investor to pay the debt i i don't want to go there no we need to know whether <laughs> you have any so do you, what's well, your briefing are you well, well my 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 intention to is to begin an investigation into the circumstances that may have led to this um, at this point in time i i i can't say i'm very much on top of all the issues about the recent news that emerged in the media i haven't taken time to um, investigate this yet but I think it is worth investigating to find out what exactly happened. So you are so, assuring us that you will investigate this issue? Yes, it will be investigated. By which time? I cannot give deadlines, but I think I will urge the University Council to institute an investigation into that. They have investigated and, and they've not continued the project. So the, the investigation has not resolved the matter. So it, 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 if you leave it to the university, you're not going to get a solution. I am interested in investigating it. All right, F let me do a final one on this. What, has, what plan has government put in place to ensure that by 2020 we have enough residential, academic, and human resource yes. to receive the number of students? We have 423,000 yes. who have been placed in SHS-1 yes. under double track. Some yes. of them are in Form 2, 3 SHS. By yes. 2020, you're going to have... <laughs> Lots of people entering universities. What what have you done you, so far? You know, we the batch or the cohort of students that will be entering the university in 2020 is the 2017 cohort that was just about 361,000 um, there about. Um, yeah. We have made projections on this, knowing very well that normally about 40 percent mm. of those that uh, sit for the WASI qualify and enter the universities. Mm -hmm. We have made the necessary uh, projections and are expecting about 145,000 um, 
candidates to be knocking on the doors of tertiary institutions uh, mm. seeking to enter. Um, and that number is about 55,000 or so, more than the, mm. the number that would normally be expected to go to universities. So mm. 145,000 um, with a, a huge number as much as 55,000 extra. That is what we are projecting to be contending with um, and for the universities to be preparing for uh, in 2020 to begin with. Mm. From 2020 to 2021, the scenario will be different because they'll be dealing with the current numbers mm. that we have on hand. Um, we have had a number of meetings um, with the vice chancellors of Ghana and also the private universities. Mm. And each and every one of them, each of them is making their own separate arrangement. Um, I can tell you um, with certainty that current U.S. seems to be to have gone very far ahead um, in plans that they have for coping with the huge numbers coming. I was highly impressed being taken around when I visited Ken UST, um, I think last Friday. Really? Yes. Let me take you on a short video to Ken UST to refresh your memory of what we have there because one of the major plans we've seen has been the decision to open up all the traditional halls to both <coughs> genders. I'm getting a message from a listener that, a viewer that, it's not just a handful of continuing students who are stranded. In terms of accommodation at Korean University, more than half of continuing students are having accommodation problems. Here's a short uh, video from Tech. We'll take a reaction to that. Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Professor Kwesi Obidanso, earlier this year hinted of a decision by the university management to convert all male halls in the university to mixed halls. This was to address the challenges of accommodation facing the university as a result of increasing enrollment of female students into the university. In an attempt to achieve this, management of KNUST has located rooms in the university hall Katanga to some female students. In stiff opposition to the decision, a joint procession was held earlier today by alumni, students and affiliates of University and Unity Hall to present a petition on behalf of the university hall to the Minister of Education, presenting the petition at and President of the Investor War, J.C. Akweku Sapomeno, described as irrational the decision taken by the investing management to convert all male halls to unisex halls. But then we contest the practicality of a solution. That is where we as student advocates are coming in and questioning that, okay, yes, we are not just fighting for our culture, but also fighting for the rights of the females that you wish to, um, what do you call it, support. And we are asking that, will this solution actually be logical? Is this, is this going to be a lasting solution? Some alumni threaten to withdraw support to the university if management does not rescind its decision while taxing investing management to be innovative and find alternative solutions. Those in a, in a, in a outside the country, if the VC maintains what is in its head, then it should cut every support that has been given to the university. There are, there are ways to, to achieve that without turning Katanga and Unity into mixed halls. Why am I saying this? There are six halls that Kwame Nkrumah built. Uh, only Professor Andam came to add one hall. All the, uh, the vice chancellors who have come after the 60s have not added any hall. If you make Katanga and Unity mix, then we are going to have five mixed halls and one female hall. But we are saying you can make one hall, one of the mixed halls, a female hall. Then what, what will happen? You have two female halls, two mixed halls, and two male halls. Then it gives anybody a choice of where to go. Receiving the petition on behalf of the Minister of Education, the Head of Public Relations at the Ministry of Education, Echo Vincent, assured the protesters that the solution to address the concerns of all parties will be reached. We are trying as much as possible to find a very neutral way to deal with this matter so that um, it wouldn't escalate the way we are seeing now. I do not want to, as it were, jump the gun. But I'm sure by next week, when the minister also comes to the office, you will find a way to deal with this particular matter. They also demand that there is a broad stakeholder conversation on the issue until the decision is being finalized. Reporting for City News, Hansen Adjum. So Hansen was uh, being drowned by the demonstrators. <laughs> so this was before you went there. 
So you apparently. went to check after this? <coughs> yes. To I, check the situation for yourself? Yes. I wonder at the time that the dust appeared to have settled down and there were no disturbances, there were no demonstrations, and the, uh, the court had ruled, you know, setting aside the, I think, the rate or injunction mm. that was meant to prevent the university from carrying this out. So I went with the intention of just finding out what, is, what was happening on the ground mm. and to assure myself that the uh, um, of the realities on the ground, that truly, truly, the two famous um, all male halls had actually been turned into mixed, and also that the only female hall, Africa, had also been truly turned into mixed. And th that was I. I hadn't been there. The last time I went to um, University Hall, um, is it that the Katanga, was somewhere. In the, in the early 90s, when I, I was part of the seminar put together by the hall, where Hawaii Akubu, my good self, and Ure Kwamofa went there to debate an issue in the presence of the students. Um, so it was looked very, very different this time, seeing uh, women and men. So they had already implemented the... the oh, the they were already there. They had already reported, and they, they were flowing together, male, female, going to get into the hall. These are mostly freshers, though. Yes, as I pointed out earlier. And, of course, you have the male wing, um, which, is, which is separate, of mm. course, but linked in one way or the other to the female wing. And it was very pleasant for the change, and I had uh, conversations and had a chat with many of the students. So you endorsed the position? Is that what you're saying? You uh, endorsed the policy? To the extent that it responds to a need. And the, the, what, I'm, what do I mean by a need? KNU West is now 38% female, mm. up from about 29% or so in 2005 when, mm. when I started monitoring this. And considering that this university is a science and technology university, mm. um, an area where women fear to tread, mm -hmm. um, to get a female enrollment of 38%, I think it's a very good thing, a very good development that the university and the country at large ought to encourage in terms of seeking gender parity. Okay. 50 50. Currently, Legon, which started um, an affirmative action uh, project uh, in the late 90s, has now reached uh, 43% or 44% women, gradually mm. inching toward the uh, 50 mark. So it's very, very exciting and inspiring for Ken UST, a science technology university, to have, his, to have increased the female enrollment from about 29%, about 205 to 38% as we speak now. And I thought it's a phenomenal development that we should. It's a phenomenal development. Yes. So the policy then endorses that. I'm saying that what Ken UST has done has been to adjust. Itself. To reflect the reality of more females. Yes, on, on the ground. It doesn't mean that is the only alternative available. Of course, they could have built more uh, female house of residence. And considering the fact that um, they have not been as flexible as Legon has been mm. in the building of uh, more traditional house of residence, I think it's a, it's a major uh, development that we, we ought to endorse. Mm. Um, talking to the women, it looks like many of them were excited. And... Uh, Many of them coming from the SHS, where they were from mixed gender um, schools, to a situation where they were mixed uh, within the house of residence. That was exciting to many of them. Okay. But what struck me was that the male in the um, in Africa Hall, you know, I think uh, it was very very new to them, and as against the male who are in the Conti and Katanga halls who are, look a little more assertive. Um, <laughs> those, I see. Those in the female right. will appear to Let, let me read a few comments for you. We'll, we'll then take a break and come back and address other issues. People say school fees are expensive. Private universities <clears throat> want a share of the cake. They are under pressure. Our investors are not doing well. Here are some of your comments. Fred from Akrani Town says, at the moment, we are not ready. Looking at the number of people being enrolled, but I urge the government to build more holes to avert future crisis. Bernard, please ask the minister how far with accepting students with D's and E's into the university. Some, have <coughs> some just have this in one subject and have stayed home for years. This is from Marian. Um, Justice of says, almost 97% of top universities in Europe have free online registration at the comfort of your home or country you can upload successfully. Why not us? 
we don't measure anything hence the overflow of accommodation yeah. and higher charges just as a fair africa economic dialogue good evening Bernard. please ask prof why the students loan trust fund is not paying students what we applied uh, to be able to pay our fees it's been three months since i applied in and the semester registration is ongoing matthias in testing matthias he would answer a question when i come back from this short break this is the point of view we're asking how fit and proper our universities with regard with accommodation and residential there are lots of questions to go through don't go away Witness the twisted and tangled story of betrayal, greed, vengeance, and love in the award-winning Brazil Avenue. Carminha, a woman led by greed, gets rid of her husband who is Rita's father and sends Rita away to a filthy landfill. Rita finds love in Batata, but they are soon separated by adoption into different families far away from each other. Many years later, all paths cross again. As Rita, now a renowned chef, seeks to pay back her stepmother for taking away her happiness as a child. It's a story of twists, turns, suspense and thrilling action in Brazil Avenue. Brazil Avenue, coming soon only on CTTV. Brazil Avenue. <laughs> Ever thought about where you'd really want to live or invest? Is it beautiful, modern and sustainable? Is the architecture advanced with state-of-the-art facilities? What if I told you you could find it only 15 minutes away from Adenta? When your hard work pays off, you need to invest in the right place. High quality real estate appreciates in value. But the value is not just your home. It is also the area that surrounds it. Good roads with safe speed limits, drainage for even the most punishing floods, and neighborhood planning that ensures your view will never change. You can also invest in the commercial, social, and mixed business spaces, as well as Apollonia Business Park. It's time to make your move to Apollonia City. Call or visit us today. Our payment plans are tailored for you. Visit www.apollonia.com.gh or call 0275-577-577. Welcome back. This is the point of view. We're live on City TV. Our guest is the Minister of State in charge of tertiary education, Professor Chris Yanka. So we discuss residential and academic facilities. Let's talk about school fees. So there's an article I, I found online written by John Kudu. He's known as Sir John, a student of UCC, who essentially says that school fees increase every year in public universities, and this is killing students. And he essentially is asking that the government does something about and this was an article you wrote in August, <clears throat> proposed school fee increments by public tertiary institutions. I've been looking at school fees because we give, a scholar, we give scholarships to students under COPE. And I've been horrified by some of the fees people have brought in. First thing <clears throat> I noticed is that a lot of well-qualified students are giving fee-paying option for medicine and for most courses. So whether at Ligon or Tech, somebody can get seven A ones and a B. And you'll be asked to be a fee-paying student for medicine and in Spain beyond 7,000 cities. Let me run through some school fees. And I wonder whether you are aware of these fees. So if you take, for example, KNUST, total for humanities is 2,175 this academic year, fresher. Engineering, 2,772 cities. Biological science, 2,602. Agricultural science, 2,603. This is tech. When you take UPSA, that, that's even more serious. Undergraduate <laughs> school fees, Ghanaian students, academic facility user fee, 4,367.20. Undergraduate weekend, academic, 4,362. And the schedule is here. I'm sure you, you can look at it. Three-year post-first degree LLB, 9,560. Four-year LLB, 5,427. 
University of Cape Coast become 2,832 freshers. This is just academic. I've not even added residential. <coughs> University of Ghana, College of Health Sciences, Biomedical and Allied Health, 2,913 academic. So if you want <coughs> to get, if you add residential, the average is about 5,000 CDs. Here you are, as a country, saying you are paying free SHS for, yeah. for, for, for two, 400 CDs for students. <clears throat> and people qualify for investing and they are being charged these amounts. This is serious. I agree. These are, these are, these are public universities. Yes, these are rather expensive. And I, um, one would have expected them to have complied with the regulation that uh, not until uh, Parliament had approved fees as they should be approved annually. Um, universities are not authorized to just charge fees as... <clears throat> as and when they find um, it necessary. But the truth really is that um, we have issued a statement to the investors reminding them mm. of the need to revert to the fees that they were charging two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, for as long as Parliament has not approved um, fees for this year, they have no right to uh, increase fees. I know that there was a previous convention by which uh, for every year, 10% mm -hmm. um, increase was allowed, mm -hmm. a marginal increase of 10% was allowed for inflation and other factors. Mm. Um, but it looks like some of the investors are probably flouting the regulation that uh, was laid down. And we have to ensure that we put them into compliance. But the students have already paid because these people, all these school officials I'm reading to you, are people who brought their school fees to us for scholarships. So I do know that, and for some of the investors, they are supposed to pay 50% or a certain percent before they start. So the, the horse is already out of the stable. Well, the they, they are already paying. And some of them, if you don't pay by close of this week, you, are, you won't get a That's very unfortunate. Uh, if investors have decided to flood the lay-down regulation, that's very, very unfortunate. And I would like to um, investigate this. I know that, that quite a number of um, students from universities such as UCC, uh, have brought before me uh, this same challenge of, yeah. of having fees um, going way beyond what they originally paid two years ago. And some universities appear even to be charging, hoping to get a little extra uh, to start um, infrastructure facilities and so on, which are very legal, I must say. I I'm surprised. Your, 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 your minister in June issued a statement. I'm going to read it. Yes. Don't increase fees. Education ministry warns universities. This is citynewsroom.com. The minister of education has directed all councils of tertiary institutions not to increase their fees and charges until their requests are processed and approved by parliament. That is exactly what I'm saying. In a letter dated 24th May, that is currently, the ministry, the finance ministry said, is currently processing requests as part of the budget preparation for 2019. And then it goes on to warn the investors against this. But how can you sit down and allow the investors to increase fees when you've categorically said they shouldn't? We should whip them into compliance, and I promise you we are going to do that. But they, the students have already paid. It does not matter. They haven't finished school yet. They can be credited. <sighs> okay, the investors in their defense, they're saying that the budget this year asked for a retention of 34% of whatever the investors generate internally. So if you ask the investors to retain 34% of IGF, they that, need money to run the school. That has been lifted. You've lifted it? Yes. As they, you have the 25%. They now retain 100% of the of IGF. I, so all the IGFs are theirs? Yes. Which was the reason why you didn't want them to increase the fees? Yes. All the IGF. On authority, you're telling On me? On authority. Wow. Yes, they are aware of this. So should the students pay? Well... I can only say that the universities are flouting the regulations. Um, wow. Not a matter of paying or not paying. But it's very, very unfair um, on the part of universities to be flouting the regulations um, just for, for convenience and as a way of um, accumulating internally generated but prof, funds. Yes. 80% of our university applicants go to public universities. They are 17 or 18. The 75 <coughs> private universities get the 20 percent so that's problem one or less or less the private university school fees suggest that the public investors should be charging more if they don't get government support because if you look at the average school fee of a private university <coughs> it's much much higher than for a public university so it's it's not that much higher i must say if you realize that a fair percentage of um 
students that enroll in public universities fall into that category that they call um, fee-paying category. The distance between the fee-paying and the private university. So the fee-paying is a more re realistic reflection of yes, the school fees. Exactly. But the higher percentage are paying fee-paying now. So if you take tech and you take medicine, <coughs> the proportion paying fee-paying is much higher now than the, it was the, five the years ago. The truth is that we are now preparing a document on tertiary education policy. Uh, this document has been missing in the equation for, for more than 20 years now. As I speak now, the TEGU committee that is preparing this document is about ready to present its report. When we get that report and that is approved, discussed and approved, uh, that will lay down the regulation in respect of fees. And that will be binding on our public universities. But the private universities are struggling for a number of reasons. Apart from the fact that they grapple for only 20% of the people, we <clears> do <throat> know that, of course, you've lifted a 25% tax. Yes. But for some reason, they are not getting enough students. <clears throat> and we are told that some policies in Nigeria are affecting them because a lot of them used to get Nigerian students. We are told the Nigerians can't come in anymore because of currency Foreign restrictions. Foreign restrictions that they have. And yeah, quite a good number of. Um, Private universities have in the past been relying heavily uh, on students from Nigeria because if you talk about foreign students, it's Niger largely Nigeria, Nigerian students who form about um, 85 to 90 percent of foreign students. Um, the numbers have been sliding of late, uh, so this has really pushed many private universities to to the corner. Many of them are have their admissions declining, um, mm. have been declining in the past six or seven years, and. Quite a few of them have shut down, uh, have completely shut down, and are seeking to be taken over by other bigger private universities. Uh, this tells you that all is not well with the private universities. And for many of them, it is largely school fees on which they depend to pay salaries of um, their workers. So they are compelled under certain circumstances to um, raise their fees. But they do so at their risk of um, not having many students seeking to uh, go into those universities because it's competition. So what are you going to do for them? Because there's a clear danger that, look, even Central, we read a, co a couple of months ago that they are in serious financial distress. And this is one of the creme de la creme. Certainly. So what's government's plan? Are you going to give them some money? Are you going to <clears> give them some... I don't know, because in it, two years' time, you may need them, right? Well... Because if, if you have the 400,000 finishing secondary school, they can't fit into the 17. We will need them, certainly, but uh, they will also need themselves, um, in a way. We have already abolished the 25% tax, co corporate tax, um, that was levied on, on private universities. And we did so in hopes that it will relax them a little bit and encourage them uh, to use the little money that they get um, to give scholarships to students, to even reduce um, the fees that they charge and so on and so forth. I do believe that in the coming years, uh, with the influx of SHS uh, students, where the demand for um, private universities will be much higher than um, it is now, they will come to grips with the reality that it is going to be very competitive and that um, universities that charge higher fees um, are likely to be avoided. But in terms of practices. saving private universities, shouldn't the government, for example, we send a delegation to the Nigerian government to say, we want a special dispensation for your students because our investors depend on them. Look, Ghana's reputation <coughs> education-wise in Africa is strong. Yes. It's not only Nigerians that come in. If a Nigerian government policy is affecting your private universities, shouldn't your ministry be talking to the Nigerian government, asking them to have a special relationship, a payment plan, so your private investors can get students? Are we just going to sit down helpless for the well, investors Well, it, 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 is, it is, has been an open system. Each year, quite a number of universities, public and private universities, organize fairs uh, within Nigeria to attract the students. Some have semi-permanent offices in Nigeria and other parts of the West Coast to attract them. Um, in terms of um, engagement with, the, with our colleagues there, uh, they are equivalent with the National University Commission, uh, similar to the NCT here. Uh, we have been engaging them in dialogues, but not with a purpose. Um, of facilitating the payment of fees necessarily. But I must say that many universities are still doing quite well in the area of um, foreign, foreign students. The Takrad 
what do you call it, uh, Kofodia, All Nations University. Uh, Wisconsin is doing quite well. Ashesi is doing very well. University of Ghana is also doing fairly well. There's a lot of unrest on university campuses. Why Technical University or why Polytechnic? They chased out their, their <coughs> rector. Winneba, they've had many, many changes. Now we are told a new team will be sworn in this weekend. While we, have, we haven't finished dealing with that, I'm going to play a short report again. This time it's on technical university lecturers mm. to tag. They say if they don't treat them like you tag, they will also strike. <clears throat> Quick report for you. The association declared their indefinite sit down strike at a press conference today. They are demanding that they receive the same conditions of service as lecturers in the public universities. According to the association, several attempts to get the situation resolved has been fruitless. The association revealed that a letter addressed to the National Council for Tertiary Education to intervene only resulted in the NTCE giving out preconditions for the migration. The conditions included the enactment of statutes, adoption of approved scheme of service, and conducting of a comprehensive staff audit. Disagreeing with the preconditions, the national chairman of TUTAG, Dr. Solomon Kilson, expressed the resolve of the association to agitate until their demands are met. The leadership of this association, in a letter dated 26 July 2018, and copied to the relevant authorities of state, formally requested the Minister, Ministry of Education, the National Council for Tertiary Education, to expedite action along with the Fair Wages and Salary Commission to remedy the situation. After waiting for over one month without any official response to the letter, further co communication followed. So we received a copy of the Ministry's response to our letter through the NCTE. The said letter presented three conditions to, the, for, uh, to be fulfilled before the migration of staff onto the requisite conditions of service for public universities, including enactment of statutes, adoption of approved scheme of service, and conduct of a comprehensive staff audit. We completely reject those preconditions and stand by our request for migration onto the conditions of service of public universities with immediate effect. In an interview with City News, some other executive members revealed how the situation has negatively affected their performance. It is discouraging to continue to give up your best and be rewarded less than you deserve. Every human being in the world would want to have their labor rewarded accordingly. And if your labor is not rewarded accordingly, certainly you'll be disappointed. It hurts motivation. It disturbs focus. It has affected me a lot. Uh, one, bringing down my, the mura, and maybe possibly the happiness, or in other words, uh, the, the, the clear conscience to deliver the best out of me. They threatened to quit the profession if government fails to meet their demands. Normally, when you are demotivated, to doing things that you love doing you have no option then to think about moving out you see you have had uh, training and experience which come as a cost you want to have a, a sound mind where you find yourself and you work very well as an individual i would like to be where i can make the most an impact and contribute my quota to the development of this country it is not something i would like to uh, um, contemplate as an individual objective. But sometimes as a human being, when you are pushed too hard, you may take certain decisions that you would otherwise not take when the circumstances are normal. Reporting for City News, Hansen Ajeman. So Hansen appears to be our university correspondent. <laughs> so very interesting, we have Teu, we have Fusag, we have Utag, now we have Tutag. That's right. And this is a legacy of converting Polytechnics to universities. There are a number of tags. So now a lot of tags. <laughs> to, from two, FUSAG right, to right. UTAG to two tag. Yeah. What, are, what are you going to do about this? Well, it's part of the transition process, you know, um, from Polytechnic to Technical Universities. Um, the process of uh, involving <clears throat> change in governance structure, um, change in statutes, 
mm. but also a capacity building aspect of it as well as um, change or upgrading of the conditions of service um, which are currently ongoing and have not been completed they know that it is a policy that the government is pursuing in upgrading along the lines that I've mentioned but it's just that the processes are not completed yet and we urge them to be patient with government. So you you will do what they are oh, asking. Oh, certainly, it's, you, it's, you will do it. It is. They part, just relax. It is part of the transition. Arrangement. Okay. Now let me ask you questions around why I even invited you. So far, I've not even asked you about our investment. They are fit for purpose. We are just solving problems. <laughs> no accommodation. No uh, academic facilities. School fees are too high. Too taxed. They don't teach. Here you are with no African university within the top three hundred <clears> in the world. Only five African investors in the top one thousand. Our best university, if you look at the Times ranking, was around 900 and something. I mean, you've been in, in education for your whole life. This is, this is terrible. Save your breath. It, it is terrible, and, and it's, it's only an index of the situation on the ground. But at the same time, um, let's not put all our hope and confidence um, in the you know, global ranking systems. They are just a PR gimmick. I am serious. Look, <laughs> look, ask yourself. Mm. Just take a close look at the ranking. Just take whichever you want to, whether Times um, or whichever you want, for ICU, whichever you want to use. And look at the trends in the past 20 years running. The positions of universities within Africa have not changed largely. Invariably, you have just about a handful of them falling into the first 1,000. And that, as you said, the best university in Africa and in Ghana itself is about 800 and something. Um, if, you, if you move this to the, um, the 10th or the 100th university, um, in Africa you're talking about 4,000 something something and so on. It, it, so the rankings are not there. Okay, no, uh, Ohala. Let, let's, let me show you. I, I saw the big deal also because who does the rankings? Fine, they are Western institutions. Yes. Now, let, but are you saying that our investors, so let's look at the at job market. Employers in Ghana have said repeatedly that our graduates are not fit for purpose. In fact, I've heard some of them even say that our graduates are not trainable. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to show you that the McKinsey, they say, for example, that the top 20 skills <laughs> we require in the world by 2020, when our SHS tools are in university, are That's the things right. I put on the screen. Complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, all these things. Are you telling <laughs> me that our average university graduate, when they go to Legon or Tech or UCC, you can confidently say that they have even half of these skills? I, I haven't studied this closely, but I, I can say that we ought to be working toward, toward this altogether. Complex problems. You should know this. I, critical no, thinking. Cr critical, well, creativity. See, many, of these, management. many of these are things or issues or traits that you could you do not find in syllabuses, the content of syllabuses themselves. Yeah. These are skills that are picked up outside the syllabus, mostly. Uh, but at the same time, you realize that many universities are considering critical thinking or have added critical thinking uh, as an, it's a very important area uh, for, as a requisite for being given the degree. Uh, Legon and Central University and quite a number of universities um, ensure that logic and critical thinking are part of the um, uh, courses that you ought to pass, uh, including numerical skills and so on and so forth. I wouldn't say every single um, issue or item raised here is being... But my resolved. concern is that People, but, people, people are struggling in residential facilities. People are crowded in lecture rooms. People, so even the basic thing you need to study, you don't have. So you can't be globally competitive. Many of these skills are picked up along the way as part of the process of making yourself logical and placing yourself within the university as a good student. And they are not picked directly within the core subject that you necessarily study. And that's why you encourage as much um, extracurricular activities. I see. As, as possible. Then the minister says that you have issued a statement for the investor to revert to two years ago. What happens to those who have already paid these exorbitant fees? This country, eh? only JA. Then I kindly ask Prof what he thinks of the polytechnics being converted to technical investors. Kuku Dan Soman. Is it a good idea? This one, 30 seconds. It's already happened. It's already happened. Yes. Did you agree to it? 
it's happened and we have to make the best of it <laughs> i won't push you I, I don't want you to say something <laughs> that will give you front page in the graphic <laughs> but it looks as if prof's era of education is not in tune with the current and modern trends of education what we need is to adopt e-learning study material e-library and course material which can make people study within their locality in the era of humanities so as to decongest the investors and improve on off-campus studies and some more horse are built. This excellent. is Alex Ramadina. Excellent. Excellent. Do you have any policy? It's happening. It's, it's happening. It's a, a very basis, yes. We haven't done it well enough um, uh, to, to remove the face-to-face -face learning as the exclusive means of um, handing down knowledge. Um, E-learning facilities are all over. But is it a policy in you see, this is a question of um, so is it a response we to we do not have any tertiary education policy down and we are building we, we don't have a, how come? There's no so, policy. So what have we been doing? There are only guidelines. We don't we don't have Are you serious? We don't have any tertiary education policy document at the moment. And we are bent on developing one. At the moment, the committee working on this um is about to hand in their report. There is no policy on tertiary education. It doesn't Ghana. mean that you do whatever you want. Because yeah. ministries are supposed to implement policy. I'm saying that there's no document at the moment. By policy is a document. There was one um, in the early 90s or so, which gave guidelines about the percentage of a uh, student that wow. any public university is allowed, the percentage of foreign students. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was about 4 or 5% percentage of graduate students uh, that we expected to um, admit and so on and so forth. There is no policy document. And wow. what happened... At, at Legon about the African Tigers would probably not have happened if there had been a policy requiring universities to refer certain loans beyond a certain threshold to the Attorney General. We don't have any such policy that requires them to do so. And that's wow. part of the reason. So when would, the, when would this policy document be ready? I'm sure by the end of... Um, 20? Ultra, no, no, no. By the end of this month. It's almost ready. The, a few more points for you. Good evening, Bernard. Please ask Prof. What happens to investors for flouting the regulations by charging approved fees? I'm surprised he as minister appears helpless. Selassie in Kasua. Prof says this is news to him that there is a challenge with accommodation on campus. Wow. Devita Subola. Bernard, please ask Prof. if he will still punish, he will still push for the conversion of Commonwealth Hall in Legon to unisex. He tried and failed. <laughs> Citizen O2, on the hoarding of rooms, this is very true. I'm paying over 4,500 for a room in Quapon at Legon. Benti Longhi, this government has bought everything good about education in Ghana, high school fees for tertiary education. Nukunu, University of Ghana has been very discriminatory in applying fee paying policy. Asking a child from Blamezado with eight A's to pay 7,200 CDs, or is Legon child pay 2,100 CDs regular, defies mm -hmm. common sense. Geoffrey Latte, what documents was Prof talking about, please? Will the set documents solve the serious issues we are facing in our universities? So there's a, there's a lot of challenge. I, I really yeah. want you to leave me with something positive because I'm getting disappointed by a lot of things I'm hearing generally about the, right. the, the space. Yeah. I mean, what's the most important thing you guys have done in the tertiary space since you took over? I think the most important thing that we would like to do is to ensure that there's a policy document giving guidelines to public universities or public tertiary institutions. Uh, that is a document we are expecting at the moment. Um, apart from that, we have sought to encourage, there are quite a number of transitions taking place within the tertiary sector, from diploma, edu no, diploma mm -hmm. to degree um, within the College of Education, mm -hmm. which are now going to be converted into uh, universities. That's a major development. Um, the teacher licensure exams, ensuring that every teacher has the license uh, to operate mm. in order to raise the level of um, um, skills that the university has and that the teacher has within the classroom. That's a very important development. Within the university or within the tertiary sector, once again, the merger of the NCT, National Council for Tertiary Education, the National Accreditation Board, to give them more muscle Mm. towards regulation. The um, policy of abolishing affiliation and lifting okay. the threshold All right. for new universities to start. So these are some of your policies. Yes. Well, I thank you for your time. I'm inviting you to Presec's 80th anniversary on Saturday. I'll give you one of our tops to wear. Come and join the president. Celebrate us. Oh, come along and join us. Happy studios are we. Professor Kwesi Yanka is the Minister of State Tertiary uh, education, speaking to us on a wide variety of issues. My name is Bernard Avlet.
Thank you for watching The Point of View. Stay with City TV. Good night. The Point of View is sponsored by Apollonia City, Accra's new master plan city.